Hello students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and the final video in the Introduction to Quantitative Chemistry. Yes, we finally got there, 24 videos in and we've reached the ideal gas law. So I mentioned in the previous video that all of those laws that we were looking at, Gay-Lussac, Boyle, Charles, Avogadro, and even the combined gas laws are based on this notion of an ideal gas. And an ideal gas behaves in a perfect manner every time. And therefore, we can rely on all of these mathematical equations that we've been looking at in order to um, do these calculations and rely on their accuracy. But in order to do that, we've had to make a quite large number of assumptions, most of which are reasonable assumptions, but not all 100% correct. So let's quickly have a look at these and then see if we can bring all of those uh, different mathematical relationships together in a single equation. So the first thing is that gases are made up of molecules that are in constant random straight line motion. So that is they will move in a certain direction uh, which is our basic law of forces unless they're acted upon by another force and obviously um, if another particle were to collide into them then that would supply a force and would move them off in another direction. Now you can see not only from the way that I've drawn this but also the way that I've explained it is that I'm assuming that these molecules or particles um, of gas are rigid spheres like little pool balls on a table. Now again, we know they are not like that, but it helps us to analyze the motion, particularly in the relation uh, in relation to these important variables of pressure, volume, temperature, number of moles as we've been doing uh, during the last few videos. So we know this is very much a, well, we're assuming that this is the case and we know that it really it isn't, but it's a good approximation. We're also assuming that the quantity of pressure is basically related to the collisions. So collisions not just between the molecules of the gas uh, with each other, but also with the walls of the container that they are in. We're assuming that all collisions are perfectly elastic. That is, there is no loss of kinetic energy. There's no sound, heat, light, any other form of energy in which some of that kinetic energy may be converted and therefore reduces the total amount of kinetic energy. Our assumption is that the um, initial kinetic energy initial is also equal to the final kinetic energy and this is uh, expressed as um, the total amount for each of the particles that are present in a particular volume of gas. The temperature is proportional to the average kinetic energy of the molecules. Not all molecules are moving at the same uh, speed. And therefore, if we consider the formula for the kinetic energy as equal to a half mv squared, we can't guarantee that all of the particles will be moving at exactly the same speed at exactly the same time um, with exactly the same mass. That also assumes no isotopes and things like that. Um, so therefore, what we've got to do is recognize that there may be some slight differences here. And so therefore, when we talk about temperature, we're talking about the average kinetic energy of the molecules or particles of gas. We're also assuming because they're a gas that the, um, there are no or at least extremely negligible intermolecular forces between the gas molecules so that they move independent. They're not um, interacting with one another in the way uh, that they would if there were even weak dispersion forces between them, uh, let alone um, dipole dipoles or hydrogen bonds or anything else like that. And the other thing too is that the volume that the actual gas molecules themselves take up is also regarded as being extremely negligible relative to the container that they are in. Quite clearly there is going to be some difference is if these uh, molecules are large molecules and they're taking up a lot of space on their own. But if we look at them relative to the container that they're in, the individual molecules take up such a tiny amount of space that we can kind of uh, negate that in our calculations. So what's the purpose of all of this? Well, the purpose of all of this is that we can actually take all of those key variables, so pressure, volume, temperature, number of moles, and we can combine them all into a single equation, which is known as the ideal gas 
equation. And it looks exactly like this. Pressure multiplied by volume is equal to the number of moles multiplied by the universal gas constant, which is what this one is, R and multiplied by temperature. The universal gas constant, R, universal gas constant, which has the symbol R, um, has differing units depending on which um, units are used for the other variables in this equation. So its most common value is 8.31 if we measure it in joules per kilogram, uh, joules per kelvin per mole. This is assuming that the pressure is measured in kilopascals, the volume is measured in litres, the number of moles is measured in moles, and the temperature is measured on the Kelvin scale. Okay, not in kilograms, but in Kelvin. We will be using this equation a little bit in class again. It's the same sort of thing that you've been doing before, but now there's a couple more variables for us to plug in. If we rearrange this equation, we can see that the constant that we've been talking about quite consistently is equal to PV on NT. This uh, is a derivative of all of the equations that we've looked at up until this point, and you can see things like Boyle's Law in here. You can see um, uh, things like Avogadro's Law and Charles' Law as we look at the relationship between each of these different components. So it's giving us a combination, the best of all worlds, if you like, and of course it's going to work if we can cancel out, say, a pressure and uh, number of moles from a particular circumstance, if those two are held constant, and then we will come back to some of those other laws that we've looked at earlier. So hopefully this has given you just a slightly longer video and a, and a bit of a wrap up of all of the information that we know about with our gas laws, and hopefully you'll have some success when you're doing your calculations. Thank you for watching and good luck.